Amen. Oh, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Because uh, I know there's a million things out there you could be doing. And that's a little bit of what I want to talk about today. I know I'm going to talk about my teachers and how important they were in my life and, and getting to where I am. But I think there's a, a couple of other things we want to touch on today too. So my name is Karen Calabrese. Um, I own a wellness center. I used to own vegan restaurants, the second longest standing raw food restaurant in the country. So it's been a part of my life for about the past 50 years. Um, and I'm just very excited to share with you what has worked for me. I want to be very clear. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a nutritional whatever. I have no titles. I just have 75 years of life experience to share with you if you're interested. And by the way, I don't like to um, argue points either because they're forever that right, there's a wrong, a pro, a con, and whatever works for you in your heart, this is what you're supposed to listen to and follow. I'm not here to talk anybody into anything or tell you you're wrong or right from what you're doing. I'm here to add to your experience, which is how mine has grown over the past 50 years. Um, when I started all of this, there was very little available out there now. We certainly didn't have Instagram and Google and Safari and all these things to look into. We had some of the greatest teachers in the world around to actually go to and listen to and learn from, which for me was everything. Um, I first learned about wheatgrass and raw foods from Dr. Ann Wigmore, who actually started our whole journey in this direction. She discovered wheatgrass for us. And uh, I know so many people living this wonderful lifestyle don't even know how they came by it. So I wanted to give you guys a little of that information. Dr. Ann Wigmore um, was Lithuanian, and she started this whole process for us in this day and time. Now, there, were the, uh, there were other health people that did it over the years, the natural hygienist and whatever, but Dr. Wigmore really brought it into mainstream a little more, and by helping with people like me and a lot of other teachers out there to get the word out. And now the word is so beautifully out, people don't even know where it came from anymore, which is a good thing in some ways, except that I like to always pay honor to what got me going and help me to frame how I was going to live my life because we all intuitively know what's right. We've just forgotten and the world isn't set up for us to remember. It's going in a zillion different ways and people just, they're not even thinking, they're not in present. Everything is being pulled in so many different directions. So I was probably fortunate enough to start on all of this a lot earlier when things were a lot slower and you had to spend more time on what you were learning and doing instead of being drawn to something else right away or drawn to over here. You know, we didn't have that. So I'm, you know, there's nothing special about how I came about it except it was the sign of the times. And I had to focus more, I had to pay attention more because there weren't a million things pulling me in a million directions. So I want to reiterate, there's not a right or a wrong or a good or a bad, just what information you're ready to take in, what information you're ready to let land on you because everything isn't for everybody at every moment of their lives. It certainly hasn't been for me. I know when I started 50 years ago, maybe it was a little longer than that, my kids were in preschool at Montessori. Uh, was it? Yeah, with the, with the whole raw thing. And I can remember a mother brought a, a meatloaf or something with wheat germ in it and went, ugh, wheat germ, really? What's wrong with her? Wheat germ, right? But that's where I was at the time. So it's to remind you, it's a process for all of us. We don't go from A to Z. I know it's a lot easier to go to A to Z now in this day and age, but I also think you may miss a few things along the way. You may, you may not, but the way I see it, you miss a few things because um, a lot of the people I know, a lot of the people I work with, I really try and slow them down and to realize that we just don't go from A to Z overnight. It's a process, you know. Uh, you, weren't bo you didn't get conceived and right away the next day you were born. It took nine months to develop and build. And here I want to throw this in right now. You kind of, you were born like this, right? And how do you get to be this size through the food you eat? how you think, how you feel, everything about you is so important. And so it's not a lesson to be learned. You read one book and it's done, or you heard one person speak and it's it. It's, it's the lesson of life. Because I truly believe that we aren't here to have the best cars, the best homes, the best husbands, the best wives, the best children, the best jobs, the most money. We're here for the evolution of our souls. We're here to evolve as human beings. And as human beings, we need to learn how to do that because this, this, the world isn't set up 
to learn how to be a human being. The world is set up to learn two plus two, four plus four. I got to make all the money I can. I got to do this. I got to do that. But for me, I don't know, kind of slowing down. And not to say that I wasn't in that world. Believe me, I was, I was at the top of my game at that world, you know. And the universe kind of put me in a spot where I had to slow down and, and become more present and, and really pay attention to what was going on in my life. Because as I pay attention to me, that gives me the, the wisdom, the uh, heart to pay attention to you as a human being. And, and to me, so much of this is missing right now, We're paying attention to each other as human beings. You know, where I'm, I'm here, I'm visiting with you, and you're checking your phone to see who, who, who texted you while I'm speaking to you. You know, we're out to dinner and you're on your phone. And I'm not saying it isn't valid, there aren't things, but maybe sometimes we need to create these barriers for ourselves so that we can learn to be more present. And this has really been my journey for the past two or three years, four years, I would say, first of all, I was forced to do it, so <laughs> nothing wrong with you. I didn't one day wake up and go, oh, I need to be more present. You know, I was kind of forced to do it. My life changed dramatically in so many arenas that I had no choice. But all I can say is I'm so grateful, so grateful that I've been given this position to put in so that I did learn to pay more attention to my heart and my surroundings and my fellow human beings to come in because I'm not doing anybody any good being on my phone. Maybe I can look up something for you, but you can look it up too. You know, you could probably look it up better than me, but you know, we all have our strong points. And I, I'm just trying to say, I don't want anybody to feel bad or any judgment or anything like that. I'm just want to say, I want to wake up a little bit. So this is going to lead me into kind of what I want to say because uh, what I want to touch on other than my teachers, I'm going to go back to that also. But, you know, I get questions, um, direct messages from the wellness spa. People come in and ask questions. People phone and ask questions. And the tendency is to give a response and that's done with it. Uh, I have a very sweet young man following me on, you know, he texted me and go, goes, you know, how do you start your day? You know, and the answer is with water, but that's not really the answer. That's an Instagram answer. Do you understand? And that's why I don't want to answer your questions on Instagram. So I'm kind of throwing it out to you. If you're really serious about hearing from me, yes, it would be great to book an appointment, a one-on-one -on -one, or take a class, but you can also DM me or email me at shop Karen's. Hello, shop Karen's. You can email me your questions and then I can bring them here so we can have a discussion about it because yeah, I am more than just water in the morning. You know, that's a quick fancy, a quick answer and it's a great thing to do, but I say my breakfast is setting my intention for the day. You know, I say my breakfast is prayer and meditation. You know, it's all in what you want to call breakfast, that first food of your life, of how you're going to spend this incredible next day that you were given. Because here's the deal, where none of us are guaranteed we're going to wake up the next day. And you can be sure, my teacher says a million people didn't wake up, a million people had a million people that didn't wake up. So I think I start my day in gratitude. I don't think I know. I start my day in gratitude. And do I always remember to do that? No, that's why I have this handy little, I do use the phone, folks. I got this handy little phone call, Insight Timer, you know, that I've programmed some things to help me to remember until it gets to be a continual natural thing like the sages and whatever, where I'm just always in bliss and grateful. Is it there yet? Absolutely not. Do I realize that's the direction I need to go in? Absolutely. Am I working on it every single day? Absolutely. So the reality is I actually start my day off with a, a, a procedure called Agnihotra and it's a fire ceremony and it's the longest known ceremony to man in the Vedics. It's about um, Ayurveda. It's an Ayurvedic uh, system and what they believe is that the exact moment of sunrise exact moment there's a curtain pull back between heaven and earth and you know who's to say heaven and earth is but we'll just use that as an analogy between the two worlds and it's pulled back and it allows all this energy to flow through and I don't want to say it's positive good or whatever I guess it's the energy you need for the day and what the planet needs so this energy comes through so I start my day and it's a healing for the planet too because I do want to throw this in if you're concerned about healing yourself you need to be concerned about healing your planet too. It's just as important because you can be as healthy if you want and the world has gone to crap, which is kind of going in that direction in a lot of arenas. I don't want to be negative. So you got to think about your planet too. So I, I start my day off with Agnihotra at sunrise. And then 
I have a bunch of gratitude prayers and it's kind of like the time between my doggy and I, we do kind of little cuddling, you know, making out with each other. It's so sweet in the morning and I'm doing a lot of my intentions. So I'm filling my body with a different kind of food or a different kind of liquid. It isn't all about, you know, we, we have so many senses, so many things to feed, so many things to feel, so many things to do, and we're not really tapping into it. You know, we're laying in bed going, well, okay, well, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to go here. I got to go there. Uh, my son needs this. My daughter needs this. My wife needs this. I got to go there. I got to be at work on time. And we're putting all this energy into what we got to do instead of getting our bodies ready to do it. You see, that's the difference, getting your body ready to do all of these things because it doesn't matter how much you have to do. <clears throat> we all have different degrees, you know, <clears throat> and I have several friends over the years, you know, you talk to them and I go, hi, I've been trying to, well, you know, I'm doing this or I'm doing that, and they just give you this litany of what they're doing because they're too busy for you in the moment. Well, you know, it could be, but maybe our exchange with each other might be more important for what you need for your soul for that day. And, you know, and maybe it will help you do the myriad of other things that you have to do. And I want to say over and over again, it has nothing to do with judgment. It's just another little tip that I'm throwing your way that's come my way after being on this planet for 75 years and seeing all the difference. Because believe me, I've been through it. I ran three restaurants. I worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can't tell me how busy you are, okay? My friends, all right? I've done it. I've been there. I was traveling the world. I was speaking all over. Loved every minute of it, but can I tell you how present I was? Probably not very present. Probably not, because I was working on the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, you know? And it got me a lot. And then you first said, really, Karen? Whoosh, it's all gone. Let's start all over again, because I got better work for you to do. And that better work requires you being present. So I don't want to give you Instagram answers. That's instant. I want to give you something that you feel, that you think, that you can contemplate. Uh, maybe it's going to work for you. Maybe it's so out of the realm of what you should be doing right now. But it's a moment in time that's going to help elevate who you are, not just water. Okay, water. Well, there's a lot more to the water I drink, too because I have a whole little water station in my house. I don't just get up and drink 32 ounces of water. It's, it's kind of like, I know this is a little crazy. And, and I'll show you, I'll take a picture of it one day and put it on Instagram. But I have like a little water station in my house, okay? And I have four bottles of uh, water sitting on love and gratitude. And then they kind of rotate and move to the magnet with the pyramid on top. Okay, I know how I can be sounding to some people. And now I have another added to the ritual. I structure it. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that because I'm still learning about it. But then I structure the water. Then I drink 32 ounces of water. Do you see, isn't that a much better answer than water? You know? So there are different things that you can look at, components. Well, maybe you're ready for just love and gratitude. Maybe you're just ready for a magnet. Right? Maybe Because I didn't start all these things at once. They have been added on and added on. As I get something in place, then I add something else to it because I've learned something else. You stay open. Do I have it on? Who knows, I may have six or seven other rituals that are gonna go with the water. Because you see, water is the most important thing to our bodies other than sunlight and the soil. Really, that's, that's, that's I don't wanna get into politics, but that's what keeps me healthy, okay? That's a good dose of a vaccination for you. And I'm not telling you to get vaccinated or not vaccinated. That's not my decision to make for you and your belief system. But I would certainly add those components to whatever else you're doing good water, get your feet in the soil barefoot, get some sunshine. So whatever you choose to do, you're going to be ahead of the game, 100%. That I can guarantee you because this is what the human body was meant to take in. Not all these chemicals, not all these, I mean, and, and you can even say, you know, your, your, um, all the different supplements and things that I use. Yeah, but water, sun, and earth is the most important, even more than these things we've manufactured. These are great because we've placed ourselves in extraordinary circumstances for human beings. So we need extraordinary circumstances to help bring some form of balance to us. So it's all about... Just, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you, you got to give it up because I know, especially you younger people, you live by that phone, you do everything by that phone. And, you know, I'm getting better with it and I'm understanding the importance of it, but it can't take over your life. And this is what's happening. People are becoming as addicted. I see people come into my wellness center and they sit there on their phones where they used to be, hi, how you doing? What you do? How many children do you have? What do you do? You know, exchanging with each other. 
We're losing that, folks. And that's the connection of human beings that we need to try and pull on everywhere we can after we bring the balance to ourselves, making the connection. Because there's a reason the world is round, is so we can keep running into each other to help each other. Because none of us get it right away, all the way, 100%. You know? And the, more, the longer I'm doing it, the more I realize I need to learn. The more I realize that I don't know as much as I thought I did 30, 40 years ago. That I am in the process. Because the more open you go, the less your ego is involved. And the more it can come to you. Because the universe has a plan, there's a platform, there's vibrations, and it's all just sitting there waiting for you. You just have to be open enough to grab it, hang on to it, use it, and put it to your heart. You know, not judging other people, not being right or wrong or good or bad, or being better. Because you see, for you to be better than somebody, somebody else has to not be making it. That, that's not even the goal here. You know? The goal is to find that peace and joy and bliss no matter what life throws your way, because that's the job of life, to throw us stuff so that we continue to learn and grow. That's the, per that's the, that's the university of life, to throw us stuff so we can continue to learn and grow from it. Not so we can be right, not so we can be wrong, not so we can be good or bad, but to evolve and learn and be able to help other souls that we're serving the planet with, right? Because I think you're very special. You have to understand, if you were born, I'll never forget, I had a minister at uh, Unity Church, Mike Matoyan. I loved him. And he used to say, do you realize how lucky you are? Do you know how many sperm didn't make it? <laughs> you know, protozoa didn't make it and you did? Do you realize how special you are that you made it through all those folks swimming at the same time and you got to be born? So the fact that we're even born is how special we are and how important it is for us to take care of this, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given. So you see the difference in the answer for water? <laughs> if you DM me or you send me a message, I'm really, I really don't want to answer your questions on Instagram instantly because I think you deserve more than that and I think there's more to it to learn when you have a question. And you know what? I don't know the answer to all your questions. I can only give you the experience of what I've gone through in the past 75 years. But I will say this. I learned how I learned from my teachers that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, Dr. Ann Wigmore, I didn't bring her book, I'm sorry, but she has so many and you can go online and find them. Be Your Own Doctor is a great one. Uh, no More Illness, Anti-Aging. She wrote some of the most wonderful books and these were in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. A lot of you weren't even born then, right? That you were preaching rah, rah, rah. Well, yeah, she was doing it way back then. And then she had Victor Kolvenskis who came to her um, institute in Boston and then he kind of helped put a scientific basis to it. That's what I love about my Victor that was one of my teachers. But you see here's, here's what I constantly remember. I look very carefully at my teachers and Dr. Wigmore could do cartwheels at 87 years old. Now granted I couldn't do them at 12 but you know Dr. Wigmore could do cartwheels at 87 years old. So you know what I was going to listen to every single thing she had to say. It wasn't in a book, although she did have books, but she was living her truth. She was living what she wanted me to do. She didn't have any gray hair, and she had overcome uh, terminal cancer, first diabetes, and she was from Lithuania. And what happened was, it was during wartime, and her grandmother was a, a I, I, don't, I don't know if she was a nurse, but she used to help with the troops. And what she would do is she would go out and make poultices of grass for the troops and then she'd have them chew on it and spit out the pulp and she found that they were healing in a different way than others so when Dr. Wigmore came to the United States uh, and she was diagnosed with diabetes and they wanted to amputate a leg she remembered that and she had them carry her to a field and she would pul poultices of the grass on her legs and she would chew the grass and spit it out and this is how she found wheatgrass for us. She then went and did experiments like Dr. Pottinger did with the cats for, you know, raw foods and whatever. Well, she did her experiment with wheatgrass. And she just put it out and she let her cats pick which grass. And they picked wheatgrass for us, right? A lot of people are going to taste awful. But they picked wheatgrass. And then Victor came along, Victor Kolvenskis, who wrote Survival in the 21st Century. This was one of the second books 
that I read when I started my journey, I think it was about 1975. He, he was a, a biochemist and a scientist and absolutely brilliant from Lithuania also. And he did the research on wheatgrass. And when they did the research on it, it was phenomenal. I'm not gonna get into all the numbers, but you know what, get his book. It's really, this is what, one of the major books that started me off. So you want some great, and it was written in, I think what, 71 or 75 or something. And it's still relevant today. In fact, I'd say 85% of what people are teaching and doing out there was written back then by him, you know. And it's, it's good to have the new spin and so many people coming about saying, you know, writing books and teaching classes. But I kind of have to say, people will say to me, well, Karen, have you heard so-and-so or have you read so-and-so's book? And I've been very negligent because I kind of got it all here, you know. And most of these people are just products of what Victor and Dr. Ann started us in. I'm not saying there aren't other areas, but these were the main sources, the main teachers. And I was fortunate enough to be involved. And then uh, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, he was another one. My very first raw restaurant that was up on Lincoln Avenue, Dr. Cousins actually came and spoke there, Dr. Gabriel Cousins. He wrote Spiritual Nutrition and the Rainbow Diet. Brilliant medical doctor, works, did studies galore on diabetes and raw foods and how people turned it around. So I was very fortunate enough to be involved with some of the pioneers, the beginners. And so I haven't studied up as much on a lot of the new people, you know, people say, have you read this or have you heard this? I'm sure they had wonderful information. But here's the deal. Once you start to work on yourself 100% or as big a percentage as you can come with, here's the deal. It's out there for all of us to download. You know, there's nothing special. We all get the same information. Are you open enough to get it and take it in? That's what's going on. Are you open enough to get it and take it in? Because it's all here for all of us to download. It's no big mystery. We just have to put ourselves in the position, put our egos aside, and be open to learning and knowing that there's so much more than what we know in this moment. That's the most important thing, knowing there's so much more no matter who you are, than what you know in this moment. And one of the things I love about Victor is he is probably one of the most humble human beings on the planet. He knows, he's probably forgotten, like my grandfather used to say, more than any of us will ever know. And he is the most humble human being on the planet. So the good news is, folks, he's actually going to do a live with me, I think it's August 17th. So we'll stay tuned. You're going to meet my teacher, my love, Victorious Kovenskis. By the way, his girlfriend at the time wrote, actually, other than Edie Mae Huntsberger, the very first raw food cookbook. I have it. I'll bring it and show it when you guys, uh, when we bring him on next week. But Victor is well into his 80s now. You should see how he can do yoga. He has formed some challenges because so have I, so have we all. This is how we learn and grow. But um, you'll want to listen to him. You'll want to hear him. And he will be here with me August 17th. And um, it's pretty exciting because he's brilliant. I probably won't be talking much because once he starts, <laughs> you don't interrupt him. You don't get to say much. And so look forward to August 17th. I have another little announcement. I think August 28th, I'm going to be speaking in Flossmoor, uh, where I live now, where we've got some of our products being sold. And so I will be speaking. Uh, I think it's called the Gypsy Fix. It's a cross wild card. It's across from the train station in downtown Flossmoor. And I'll be speaking at 1 o'clock on the 28th there. So come, let's meet and, you know, I get to experience your energy and we get to do it in person. I'll really look forward to that. So uh, other than the water questions, do I have any other questions? So I want to get to the questions where people sent them to me. I'm going to get all of your questions, but let's get to the ones that uh, were following the protocol and the ones sent to me. Okay, so one of the questions is, um, do you have any tips on growing wheatgrass and sunflower sprouts? Do I have any tips on growing? Yeah, I do, because I was one of the first ones to grow it uh, after Dr. Wigmore and her places. Uh, yeah, one of the things, I don't know what problems you're experiencing, but I do know that if you soak your seed with a little seaweed water, that can help. A lot of times the seed we get may be a little moldy or it isn't as fresh. You know, seeds will last forever, but it depends on how they're kept and how they're processed and whatever to a degree, you know. So you could soak your seed. Another thing to remember is wheatgrass should never be sprouted, uh, soaked for more than 10 hours. 
all the other sprouts that I do, I kind of vary and do what's comfortable when I, you know, kind of feel like it overnight. Maybe. But wheatgrass, especially when I have my greenhouse, really responds to just 10 hours of soaking. Then the other thing you might add is red worms. You know, I was composting in my first restaurant in the basement. The city came and shut me down. But um, I was composting in the basement, and I actually purchased red worms because it helps with the soil. So those are some tips. I hope they help you and work for you. And actually, you know, you can do them hydroponically too. But um, give it, keep giving it a try. It will work for you. I hope I answered your question. Another one? Yeah. Johnny says he loves you, by the way. Oh, I love you more. And we're talking about Mr. Juicer, who's doing such incredible work right now during these times, and he gives lives all the time to um, help you guys and, and guide you in the ways that are working for him. So I would definitely tune in to Mr. Johnny Juicer or Johnny Morelli. All right, who else? Um, so the next question, uh, this lady says she's been suffering uh, with glycoma for about 30 years. Um, and so is there anything that you can recommend for her? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So the uh, someone is asking about glycoma, and she's suffered with it for 30 years. And um, so let me start out with this. First of all, as the eyes weaken, that's directly uh, related to the kidneys weakening. And some of us are born with weak kidneys, which I was. So my hair started to gray earlier. That's another weakening uh, sign is graying of the hair. And my vision as a child was 50-90. I wore glasses, and they were kind of a mess. As I started to detox and cleanse and change my life habits, my vision improved. I mean, it was a surprise to me. I was coming back from Op Optimal Health once with my daughter and husband, and we stopped at a restaurant, and I could read the menu without my glasses, and I couldn't believe what was happening. Well, I had just come back from the detox, so my eyes were really stronger than they had been. As, as time went on, it faded again, but it didn't fade back to where it was. So I guess the story for you is you have to find a cleansing program and continue with it ongoing, like four times a year, twice a year, do things that will strengthen your internal environment. So I don't want you to just concentrate on the kidneys because everything is related to everything. It's so that you can start to strengthen because the your entire body. The body is a self-regenerating organism. It's there to regenerate for you. We just have to put enough of the right stuff in and not too much of the wrong stuff and it's going to serve you well. One other little trick that I did hear about and I have had a couple of clients that have tried it and we did is one, you can put wheatgrass in your eye. Uh, you can, Dr. Wigmore used to have us do that. You get one of those little eye cups and you put some wheatgrass in and you open it and put it in your eye. And then I had another gentleman, uh, older gentleman that had been in the process for years say that he regenerated his eyes by putting them in salt water. And he didn't live near an ocean, but he just put in his sink uh, purified water and he put Himalayan salt, or I think at the time we were only using the gray salt, and he would open up his eyes for three to five minutes in the salt water and he felt that that got rid of the, the cataracts and the glaucoma and all the other things. But I strongly would recommend that you find a good detoxification program. Of course, I recommend mine, but there are many roads to the top of the mountain. And continue to clean your system out and minimize as much of the negative stuff that you've learned is negative to put into your system because everything is a reaction to what we're doing, cause and effect. This is what rules the universe. It doesn't surprisingly out, come out for here somewhere. And people will go, oh, well, my mother and grandmother and great-grandmother all had the same thing. Well, that's because you're living the same lifestyle and eating like they did, you know, necessarily. So you've got to make a huge sweeping change and find a way to keep attention to the intention of what you're doing. I hope that answered your question. The next question is, are you able to recommend things that help with inflammation around the heart? Well, you know, if you have inflammation, it just isn't around the heart. And I think the thing that I want to get across the most is we're kind of trained to compartmentalize the body in our world. And what we have to remember is everything is connected to everything else. You know, so if you're doing something for the liver, it's going to affect the kidneys. And if you're doing something for the heart, it's even going to affect the knee. Do you understand? One of the things I learned from Victor, I want to keep throwing him in, I remember when I broke my kneecap on this side, I've broken both of them, and I was in such pain, he had me massage the other side to help the one that was in pain. Everything, and we'll get him to talk more about that. 
uh, when he comes on with me on the 17th. But everything in your body is connected to everything else, and this is what you need to remember. Everything is connected. So inflammation, I would work on inflammation in my system in general. And there are many foods that are, you know, cooked foods are, uh, create inflammation in the body. 90% uh, of what people are taking in are creating inflammation. I do have products that I recommend. Uh, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not a doctor or nutritionist, but for myself, I do a systemic enzyme on a consistent basis to help with inflammation. Um, there are a lot of things that I could recommend. I would probably prefer to do it privately because, you know, I'm not registered anything, and I think we have to be a little more careful these days with uh, what we say and how we do. It's just the way of the world. And by the way, back in, I think it was 92, when I was doing all this, they passed a law saying that it was illegal for anybody other than a registered dietitian to give food advice. And I actually had three friends grow to j go to jail that were doing this way back then. So, you know, these are unique times, so we have to step to the time. So there are other things. I can give you a generalization, do a good detoxification, uh, systemic enzymes. Um, can, I don't have the big bottle. Oh, there it is up here. Systemic enzymes can help. Adding more greens. Uh, of course, finding uh, some form of yoga can help the heart. There's so many components to that, and I hope that helps you with your question. Um, Charlotte Roque from YouTube says you look fabulous. Uh, Thank first you. Of all. And she says, whenever, you take the, whenever I take the enzymes, I notice I go to the bathroom more. Do, do, do the enzymes help the body detox? I love, love, love my products, both me and my husband. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, well, what they're doing is they're keeping the food from sitting in your system so long. So you're getting the nutrients what you need, and it's getting out what you don't need. And I always kind of get tickled when people complain about going to the bathroom too much, although you weren't complaining, because I always go, look in the toilet, do you want it back? You know, your body's not eliminating anything that it needs when you go to the bathroom. Your body has composted the food. That's what's happening down your whole digestive tract, it's actually composting the food, and then you get rid of the compost and save the nutrients. And if we were living in a perfect world, we'd be crapping in the street, I mean, not the streets, in the forest, you know, and it would compost the soil to make more beautiful vegetables and fruits and stuff for us to eat. So there is a process that we have to kind of stop living in the world that we do. So be happy you're going to the bathroom. But what will happen is that the more you're doing this in the process, which has happened for me, because I used to be constipated terribly, constipated, is that you eat a lot less, so you have a lot of compost, so you don't go to the bathroom as much. You just go at like 20 minutes after you eat, and you're kind of done. So I'm happy things are working for you. I wouldn't live without my enzymes, to be honest with you. And maybe it's a good time. I'm just going to throw it in real quick, but we'll talk about it more as my latest project I'm doing is my sugar break. And oh, let me pick it up so you can kind of see it. Uh, for about the past six months, I have been working on this wonderful little break for everybody to take. Can you see it? I don't know, can you see it up there? My little sugar break. And I'm not going to get into it uh, a lot today, but for me, it's very important. Um, 40 something odd years ago, I started helping people and teaching them to detox, and then it was cleanses and then reboot, and God bless everybody doing it. I don't really want to hear those words a lot anymore, so I'm saying let's take a break. And when I talk about a sugar break, I'm not just talking about white sugar, I'm talking about honey, agave, maple syrup, I'm going to make some people mad, fruit. <laughs> I know I'm going to get everybody pissed at me with the fruit thing, all the, my little fruitarian friends, God bless you. But um, everybody needs to take a break in their bodies from all the sugars. And I'm just saying 10 days, and you don't have to believe me. Try it and see how you feel. Because here's how I came to it for myself. When I went from being a carnivore to a vegetarian, I felt incredible. And I went from being a vegetarian to plant-based vegan, and I went, wow, this is how we're supposed to live? And then I went from being plant-based cook to, hi, to raw plant-based, and I thought I could walk on water, right? And then, after all that, I spent, I gave myself six months with no sugar, no fruit. The only thing I allowed myself were red peppers and tomatoes, which are technically fruits. They have seeds. That's all I allowed myself. And ladies, all I can tell you is I lost another 15 years off my face, okay? So it was worth giving it up. You don't understand the amounts of sugars you're taking in. And the beauty of my little kit here is you can be a carnivore, 
a paleo, keto, vegan, vegetarian, raw, I don't care what label you're comfortable with, everybody will benefit for taking 10 short days of limiting all sweets. So I'll get more into that another time. I didn't really plan on doing a commercial here, but uh, I'm very proud and excited about this and I would check into it if I were you. Okay, I'll take another question. Deborah Henderson from the Zoom uh, asks, can you make a recommendation for a toenail fungus? Oh, yeah. Uh, if, you, if the fungus is coming out through your toes, that means you're pretty heavy with fungus internally, too. And one of the things that I address in my 28-day detox is yeast, and that's fungus in the body. Uh, it's kind of there, and it's fed by sugar, which is why I'm doing the sugar break. Uh, it's fed by alcohol, drugs, um, so many things. Um, it feeds this overgrowth of yeast in our system, and then it starts to come out in different places in our body. Women can get yeast infections. Sometimes people get an itchy anal passage. Maybe you get tungus, fungus in your nails and your toes. And it's this yeast, this overgrowth of yeast in your system, my opinion, that needs to be put into control. Do you ever get 100% in control once it's gone out? Mm, probably not. But you can bring it into control. So I would recommend that my oil of oregano is wonderful for that and you can actually put it on externally. Another cheap, easy way that I've helped people or suggested to people before is, you know that dollar bottle of hydrogen peroxide you can buy in, in the drugstore? Put a bottle, uh, um, do 50-50 with water and that and soak your feet in it. That helps get yeast in balance too. And then if you're in Chicago, I have ozone bathing, I have infrared saunas, I have all kinds of therapies here to help you address that because it, it can take a while. And the yeast is a good thing, it's there to help us decompose after we die. But unfortunately, we feed it. And by the way, it's fed by stress too. Stress, sugar, alcohol, drugs, antibiotics, all of these feed this yeast. And some people can tolerate more than others, but it eventually comes out. And then the good news is, you know, you should address it before it gets worse in other areas of your body. Um, Queen Ebony from YouTube. Uh, Karen, is it okay to take a full dropper of oregano oil to boost my immune system? I do it on a regular basis. I do a full dropper three times a year. It's a spice. It's not an herb. So it's a spice. So it, I believe in my world, I think it's safe. So I sure do, and I'm not the little one, not the little one, but the big one. I do a full dropper full several times a day. I do it before I meditate because I, help, I feel it helps put me in a good place mentally, gets the yeast in balance. Because that yeast is just going to rear, rear its head up all the time, unless you're Sagaru living in, in bliss, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, oil of oregano, I believe I, that's the amount I do easily. So feel comfortable. Yes. In what way does sugar aid you? Can you elaborate? Oh, yes, I was asking that. Okay, so once again, I'm going to remind you I'm not a scientist. You know, all of mine is anecdotal based, my answers. But from what I understand, it's the glycosins and the sugar that kind of create this environment in your system to kind of rot you and age you faster and wrinkle you. Um, so I don't have a true scientific answer. We did do more in the book that comes with the sugar break, and I can recommend a wonderful book by William Duffy called Sugar Blues. I think I read that in about 73 or 74 also. You might want to get William Duffy's Sugar Blues, and you can get more of the scientific data because sugar is responsible for so many ills of the world, so many ills of the world, and not just we just have an abundance of sugar. It's in everything. It's in your soups. It's in your crackers. And, you know, for my lovely fruitarians, I know I already had a little pushback about it, and I don't want to argue and talk anybody into anything, but, you know, when man was created, uh, it wasn't like it is today. He was roaming the planet, you know, and to roam the planet, you needed that kind of energy from, from the sugar. You know, he, he wasn't sitting in behind a computer or driving to the grocery store to uh, get his fruit. He was climbing the trees, which somebody was very cute. They wrote, well, Karen, how do you know what you're talking about? You're only 75. There are guys in the jungle, 100 years old, climbing trees. But the operative words was, they were climbing the tree. <laughs> they weren't driving to the store to get their fruit. They were climbing the tree. You know, so all of this it's stored insulin, all this sugar that we're doing, it just, I believe that it alters us into such a way that you get so addicted that you don't even realize you're altered, which is why I would love for you to try the $10, $10, <laughs> 
<laughs> I wish I could do it for ten dollars. I can't. But by the way, it's only it's less than fifteen dollars a day to do it for ten days, and you have product left over. But uh, it's it's. I would love for you to get the sugar break. Uh, and oh, here's. I think this was kind of clever. <clears throat> what I did was in the box when you get it, when you open it up. There's a QR code here, and you kind of click, click on the QR code, and I give you a bunch of information about it and, and walk you through it and help you with it. So it's kind of like bringing me home with you to help you do this little 10-day sugar break. Anyway, uh, oh, and you know what I'm forgetting when I was talking about the breakfast? I'm going to roll back that real quick. I have these incredible meditation pillows. We'll get back to those again that I absolutely love. You know what it is, folks? It isn't just adapting the new intention. It's finding a way to keep attention on it. So when you have like a neat little cute, you know, meditation pillow sitting right there by the window where you're going to meditate, you're not going to forget. You know, you have to set your world up to be successful when you decide to make the changes. So, yeah, we got meditation pillows to help with your breakfast too. Anybody else? Yes, a question here. Um, do you add something to your water? Can you go into more detail about your water routine? Uh, well, I actually have to show you the water routine, my water. And I, I don't add anything to my water because I believe I'm exceptionally alkaline. So, but when I start working with people in the beginning, I have a number of one-on-one -on -one clients around the country, the world actually, or people come in to work with me. I generally start people on putting in like a little quarter or an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda in the water just to help their systems become more alkaline a little quicker. I know there are people that add lemon juice and that's good for the liver. But I personally don't want to start with any acid of any kind in the morning. So I think there's a reason God or universe or spirit puts so much water on the planet. And I think we're just supposed to drink water. You know, clean, good, clean water. Uh, your brain is 70% water. Your body is 70% water. The planet is 70% water. And I don't think it's supposed to be water and lemon. And, you know, the lakes don't have water and lemon. And, you know, the lemon in this. And, and it doesn't have baking soda either. My purpose in that is helping your system to become more alkaline. And if you find something you want to put in to make your system more whatever you've decided to work on, go for it. But I say let's get back to just some good, clean water. What are your feelings about the vaccine? Well, um, here's the deal. I really don't want to get into it. I believe that um, everybody has to do what they feel is right. I will say that um, I wasn't into vaccines in general with my children. I brought them up without vaccines um, because I had my own personal thoughts about it. Uh, I actually researched it intently. I went to hear Dr. Lynn uh, Horowitz speak back in about 81 or 82 he did a lot of information so you might want to look up his website just on vaccinations in general so you know I'm I'm not going to comment on it because I don't want anybody to feel bad or good about their choices I want them to feel right within themselves because this is a personal choice and I think you have to research wake up pay attention but whatever you choose to do, you need to fortify your body with the vaccination of nature and life. Uh, a person asked, uh, are the sugar break kits, are they mailed out or do they have to come here and pick Oh, them? no, we ship them everywhere. <laughs> I can ship them everywhere. And one of the cute things, okay, so I was talking to one of my daughter's friends who used to detox with me. I mean, my, well, my daughter's 50. So they were in their teens and, and um, they were in their teens when I started doing all this or before and I started a whole detox movement back in you know 30 40 years ago and she said Karen don't you remember you did the red tags then too I didn't even remember that when I started my first detox classes I used to give people red rubber bands so your sugar kid is gonna come with a little red rubber band because what happens is you set the intention and you're not stupid or weak life comes in and you forget right so I've given you this little it comes in in the kit there's a little well it's not in this one uh, maybe because I have it on my wrist it comes with this little rubber band so when you get ready to reach for something because you do forget life is there you go oh, oops I'm on my sugar break and you remember and then I've created these little balance bites they're algae they're they're very high um, nutrient level foods and you kind of pop one in your mouth and it's algae, one of the first foods on the planet for humans. And it kind of makes you feel balanced. 
And so you're not reaching for that donut when you pass somebody's office or you're not dumping uh, maple syrup in your raw oatmeal or you're not starting a breakfast of big fruit breakfast, you know, because by the way, even if you start your day with all the sugar, it kind of sends your blood sugar up and then it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day, how you think, how you feel, and how you look. So I'm just asking for 10 little days to see if there's a difference. Uh, Kay Norris from YouTube. Uh, hey guys, I'm on day 18 of Karen's 28 day detox and I feel amazing. I'm on day 18, she's on day 18 of my 28 day detox and that's the first one I started years ago. I, I shortened it to 28 but it was 30 originally. And um, she's on day 18, thank you for the commercial, I mean thank you for the testimonial. Uh, because all I can say is I've done this for so many years and it isn't something I read in a book, it's something I've done for myself. I learned it from Dr. Wigmore, Victor, and my husband and I used to go to the Orient four or five times a year and I learned a lot from um, Chinese healers, uh, Vietnamese healers, Korean healers when I would travel to Asia. So uh, I'm just very excited that it's still going strong after all these years. I've been teaching it almost 40 years detoxing and I like to remind people I'm not the only game or there's many roads to the top of the mountain, but I know for sure mine works. I guarantee it. Oops. <laughs> I forget to look at the right camera. I get busy looking at myself. Go ahead. Karen, can we have unsweetened almond milk on the sugar break? Absolutely. Unsweetened almond milk. Absolutely. And what I am allowing is monk fruit and stevia because they don't do anything to the glycemic index in your body. Oh, I wish I had it. I took it home. Somebody brought me an actual monk fruit. I, I'd never seen one. You remember I did the whole thing with, uh, I never had a fresh garbanzo bean in all these years. Well, I found monk fruit. But you can have monk fruit and you can have stevia. The only reason I don't use stevia is because I personally don't care for the taste. But it's excellent. Those two things are allowed. And yes, unsweetened almond milk. Hey, here, you can do any diet you want. That's the beauty of this. I'm not singling out, you gotta change your diet because what I'm believing though, is once you start doing this algae, and one of the supplements is an algae supplement, it's an algae fiber supplement. Once you start doing the algae and the fiber, your biochemistry changes. This is all anecdotal, I'm not a scientist, but what I found with the people I work with and myself, it changes your biochemistry so you stop reaching and doing what you were used to doing. You know, so you don't have to use the brain. Your body will lead you because it is, your body is trained to do the right thing. You've just untrained it and forgotten and the world wasn't set up for you to do it. What is the best milk you would suggest for lactose? Uh, well, you know, there's so many um, good ones out there now. I mean, if you're nut sensitive, do a pumpkin seed milk. Um, oat milk is, you know, kind of easy to do and nice and rich. Uh, I would say, you know, start with buying the store-bought milks. But, you know, like a lot of times that I won't use the brand, almond milk maybe has nine almonds in it, you know. So I would work toward making my own, but just get it. Yeah, just do an alternative milk. Uh, sesame milk is very high in, in calcium, so there are a lot of good ones out there, cashew milk. So, you know, see what you like the best, because here's the deal. I can tell you what the best is, but if it isn't convenient, cost-effective, and tasty, doesn't matter what the best is, you're not going to do, right? So experiment and see what works for you, as long as it's not the poor cow's cow pus. Okay, the next question we have is, what is the fresh Irish moss for? Is this like a probiotic? And can I add it to my kids' smoothie? Ah, oh, the fresh Irish moss. I'm going to tell you something. It is, it's a panacea. Well, first of all, it's 92 of the 102 minerals our bodies need. So you're getting remineralized. And I'm going to tell you, the minerals are catalysts to help, like enzymes to help everything work in your system. And even if you're buying organic, the soil doesn't have what it had 75 years ago. So you're not getting the minerals that humans were intended to have. Um, so you're getting 92 of the 102 minerals you're supposed to have. I use it on my skin. This isn't bad skin for 75, right? And I'm not doing any of the stuff that people are doing, not making judgments on people who do, but I'm going to stick with it as long as I can. So I use the um, Irish moss on my skin. I use the hyaluronic acid on my skin, but Irish moss, it goes in my hair. Uh, I take two tablespoons every day, and absolutely I would put it in my children's smoothies. 
Uh, it's great for your thyroid too, and, and, and it's got so many benefits. It really is. Dr. CB did so much incredible work on it. You might look into some of the stuff. A lot of great people. And my friend Dom, who asked about, um, we're all carrying it now, so there's so many places to get Dom on Instagram, who asked me about what I eat in the morning. You get that long preacher story. Uh, he's selling it. I mean, it, it's all over the place. You know why? Because it's working. And he has a lot of good information he puts up on a regular basis. So check him out. It's Dom something at, um, you know what, we'll write it in there or something, because he's doing some great work on the Irish moss also. Uh, Deborah Henderson from the Zoom asks, what is the benefit of Rejuvelac? What is the benefit of Rejuvelac? Well, Dr. Wigmore actually started us with the Rejuvelac, and it's B12. It's living enzymes, and you see you need enzymes for every metabolic purpose in your body. Enzymes are like the electricity that turns on the light in your body. So it's living enzymes, it's fermentation, so it's like doing non-dairy yogurt for the body. So you're getting the good fermentation, you're getting B12, you're getting protein, you're getting calcium, and it's from sprouted wheat seed. But if you're feeling that, you know, I can't have wheat, 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 although from what I learned from Dr. Wigmore, organic, raw, wheat is fine for you. It's the processed stuff that they're making that's the problem. But um, you can make it out of quinoa. You can make it out of uh, rye. You can make the rejuvelac out of so many other things. But it's living B vitamins, B12, vitamin K, protein, calcium. It's kind of like a little energy drink. And it's also a preservative. So uh, with the restaurants, we always use a little rejuvelac in our soups and things to help them to stay preserved, to uh, live a little longer in liveness. What do you think about bioidentical hormones? Well, not being a scientist, I don't have a lot of thought on it, to be honest with you. It's, it's not a part of my world. Um, I tend to stay away personally from what scientists does, and it's not to say that they don't do some great things, but uh, what I find is when I stick with nature, God, spirit, universe, there aren't any mistakes. <laughs> you know, they don't have to come back and say, but if you do too much of this, or but, although you can do too much of certain things, but I don't know, it's just me personally. I don't get involved in the scientific world. And believe me, my daughter, my husband, and people around me love the scientific world, and I understand it. There's a certain amount of comfort for certain people being in that world. But personally, I rely on my own laboratory in my body, so I couldn't tell you. Sherry D. from YouTube asks, what are your thoughts on nutritional yeast? It makes me feel sleepy. Well, you know, too much of anything is. And, and I don't know the rest of your system while it, why it's making you sleepy. Because we use it more for flavoring. It is B12, too. But we use it more for flavoring in our foods. And, you know, I wouldn't sit down and eat a cup of nutritional yeast. But I certainly use it in flavoring and people, keeping the people around me vegan and raw. So, um, I don't see a problem with it in, in small amounts, and maybe you just need a detox so that foods aren't making you sleepy after you eat, or it could be some of the other wrong foods you're eating. Uh, Anita from the Zoom asks, does sugar feed cancer cells? Not a scientist or a doctor, but from my understanding, cancer loves sugar. It loves sugar, yeast that we talked about earlier, acid, and mucus. Those are four components that cancer cells, you see we all have cancer cells in our bodies at different times. They're in different parts of the body. But we create an environment for them to come together as a soldier and army and then you have your tumor and it explodes. Now here's the deal, you definitely want to tune in to when I have the um, talk with Victor because he will give you all the scientific knowledge. He can answer this better than anybody I know in the world on what feeds cancer. I mean, he's got books written on it, on, on um, deterring cancer in the body and turning it around. That's what he and Dr. Wigmore started all their research from in the very beginning. People were coming to the Boston Institute for that. So you definitely want to tune in when Victor is my guest on the 17th of August at 5.30 Central Standard Time. Do you have any suggestions for body odor? Yes. So I, <laughs> once again, it's a one size fits all detoxing and cleansing. We're not born to stink, folks, okay? That's not a reality that human, I haven't worn uh, deodorant. I got friends still. No, you know, I don't wear, we're not supposed to stink. A lot of that is if you were a meat eater, an animal eater, whatever, it rots and putrefies in your system and then it comes out when you sweat. I always say people are little pet cemeteries out there, right? So uh, you, you it's, it's, something, it's, it's something you need to cleanse out your body. 
the more greens you eat, the less you'll stink too because it absorbs the smell. So I'm talking about spirulina, um, uh, wheatgrass, chlorophyll, kamut, uh, the green meal, the green living fiber, all the different greens that I recommend throughout my processes that people work with me. So definitely adding more greens to your system will help. But moreover, a good detox. And one of the things people find out, by the way, not only will you not have body odor, your poop won't stink. <laughs> when you get like this in your raw food, even your poop doesn't smell. We're not supposed to stink. Think about it, moms, those of you that had babies um, and you breastfed them and then all of a sudden you introduced regular food, you know, the, the Gerber's baby food, and all of a sudden their poop starts to stink, their little bodies start to develop things on them, rashes and stuff. When you keep your body, my kids were on breast milk only for six months. I had a phenomenal pediatrician. He was from Europe. And his mother, he, he was a twin, and his mother nursed both of them. So he, I couldn't give him an excuse of why I couldn't do it. And my son nursed round the clock. Uh, he was colicky because I didn't have the best pregnancy because I didn't know how to take care of myself like I do now. And I literally, every two and a half hours, I had to nurse him. And he didn't believe that children should have any foods before six months because he said the internal and intestinal things weren't fully formed. So you shouldn't put anything, real food, only breast milk. So my son and daughter were only breast milk and then the minute and it was like little mustard coming out didn't smell didn't stink and the minute you introduced food I wasn't raw then it started to smell so what does that tell you everything that you're putting here is creating the smells coming out of you so it's so important to detox and what you put in last question uh, from Deborah Henderson do you have recommendation for thinning hair or hair loss well, here's the deal. Once again, you know, I know I said cancer, endometriosis, Crohn's, all these different things are challenges that are created by what we put in here. And yes, once again, even the thinning of the hair. So, oh, but here's one thing. I would start putting the um, Irish moss on my hair. I would do like little Irish moss because it helps stimulate growth in the hair. But once again, it's your diet. And I can't go into what you're doing or what you're not doing. That would create, that would, uh, you know, I'd need a one-on-one -on -one with you or one of my classes to do that. But uh, there's so many reasons. But what I see, oh, do, do I have my pictures? Can I show them, um, Yvette, uh, uh, Doc? Uh, Next time. <laughs> I could show you clients that came with balding hair. And after one detox, they had a full head of hair. Okay, uh, the shampoo and conditioner you use also could be a part of it. Uh, you know, so we have a pretty clean shampoo and conditioner that I recommend because you have to look at all those chemicals and this is your brain that you're putting the chemicals into. So not only is your hair thinning, if that's what's creating it, it's going into your brain too. The skin is the largest absorbing um, organ on your body, <laughs> thank you. And so whatever you put wherever is going in, that's why my toothpaste, my shampoo, Everything that goes on my body, if I can't eat it, it doesn't go on my body. So anyway, time is up so quickly, folks. And, and I'm so honored that you chose to spend this time with me. And even if you're looking at it later, that's the good news is because, of, if, because you know what? You need to hear these things over and over and over again. They don't just show you on one commercial and expect you to run out and go do it, right? They show it over and over and over again. So... It'll be on IGTV, you can get it there. I'll have a YouTube up for it, you can see it there. Uh, get your questions ready for me next time. I will be coming on the 17th. I don't know how I can answer because Victor is gonna be answering them for us. He's the genius, he's the one that started it all. Please make sure you tune in if you've got questions that you want answered a thousand percent. You wanna come on when I bring uh, Victor Kalvenskis on. This is his book, Survival in the 21st Century. You can order it ahead of time. And I'm just so blessed and honored that you spent this time with me. And I would just love you to remember that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? And I'm throwing in planet too. Thank you.